Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today we're talking about general blood tests that you can do for your brain and your body to understand your health generally. When we used to do blood tests every year for people, we would do a complete blood panel, and that meant actually blood and urine, and a physical exam and a history. And we would have people pop in for a one-year physical and just check on them to make sure that they were okay. That included a CBC, or a complete blood count, a biochemistry profile, or what used to be called a SMAC-20, or a blood chemistry. And then the last was a urine analysis. Now, this wasn't a toxic screen like for marijuana or an advanced metabolic test like an organic acid test. It was a simple urine test, a spot urine, which means it wasn't a 24-hour collection. It means they didn't give you a jug and have you pee in the jug for 24 hours and then bring it to the laboratory. That's not what the test was. It was just one little collection and one little cup, and they would measure the basics. And so I'll go through those with you today. The basics of the complete blood count were to measure the amounts of red cells and white cells and platelets. When red cells are elevated or red cells are reduced, it may mean that the person has too many red cells or too few red cells. If they have too many red cells, it's often a problem of, of dehydration. The person has too many red cells because of the dilution of water or not. So if they have too little water, they might have too much red blood cells, and that might make it look like they have too much red blood cells, but they really are just dehydrated. On the other hand, they might have too few red blood cells, and they might be anemic, and there's many causes for anemia. So we would use the red blood cell values to explore all the different causes of anemia that have to do with protein or iron or vitamin B12 or chronic infectious anemia or, or anemia of chronic disease, which your doctor can help get into and which we get into in our courses. When you look at white cells, white cells will show you about infection. They give you a concept of whether your white cells are elevated or reduced. And if your white cells are elevated, we consider that an acute infection. And if they're reduced, we consider that a chronic type of infection. Each of the kinds of white cells tell us a little more detail about what kind of infection it might be, whether it's a reaction to, say, an allergy, or whether it's a reaction to a virus or a bacteria. When we look at platelets, platelets can be an ominous sign. When platelets are elevated or platelets are reduced, doctors don't like to see that because platelets are the clotting factors in your blood. So when we see platelets drop, especially, we don't like to see that, and it can be an ominous sign that says we better look at the bone marrow, we better look at the blood further. And, and ideally, if you have questions about blood, the best people to ask are the hematologists and oncologists. There's another test in a, in a blood work called alkaline phosphatase, and this has to do with your metabolism of your bile and your gallbladder, and the alkaline phosphatase, if it's elevated, can mean that there's a problem in your chemistry with your liver and, and your enzymes, and that alkaline phosphatase has isoenzymes, it has fractions of it that can be measured as a follow-up test where you measure all the different parts of this. And when you measure the different parts of it, you can figure out what body system is having a problem. Another thing that I ran into a lot in my practice was LDH being low. LDH is a lactate dehydrogenase. Lactate dehydrogenase, if it's below 140, tends to indicate that a person might have a problem with low blood sugar. They might not get enough calories or carbs to produce lactate dehydrogenase enough to operate some of their vital enzyme systems. And that might make them feel really bad and have some real problems making hormones and enzymes and digestion and any number of problems with their mitochondria and their energy production. So they could get very fatigued and they could be very sick. Another test is a series of, of kidney tests that are the glomerular filtration rate. And the glomerular filtration rate is simply, how is the kidney filtering? And if that is off, it can tell you about the kidneys. And there's a new, kind of a new version of that, a sister test called cystatin C. Cystatin C also measures kidney function, and so does blood urea nitrogen. Blood urea nitrogen measures how much nitrogen is making it into your urine and gives you an idea if your kidneys are doing a good job dealing with your protein or not. The next test is LDL. LDL is the bad cholesterol that we say, bad cholesterol, low-density lipoprotein. And it really is no such thing as bad cholesterol. But you have to know that LDL is often elevated in people that are trying to lose weight, that are dieting, people that are restricting their, their carbohydrates or their calories, or that are having excessive carbohydrates. There's lots of things that can change LDL. But it's not always bad by itself. LDL by itself, elevated, doesn't mean that there's a problem, although when it's coupled with other things, it could be a real problem. 
that the biggest problem is if it's coupled with high triglycerides. If LDL is high and a person's eating a low carb diet and their triglycerides are low, they're probably okay. But there really isn't a blood way to determine if they're okay. They really need to do something like a, an ultrasound of their liver or an MRI of their liver to see if they have fatty liver disease or what's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD. This is extremely rampant in the United States. So many people have it. And it's basically visceral fat of your liver and pancreas, which is a visceral fat, or it's called central fat or central adiposity. And this is a different kind of fat that really causes a higher risk for heart disease, for stroke, for cancers, for metabolic diseases, for diabetes. It's a real problem. It can even, even contribute to prostate disease, prostate cancer. It can contribute to female hormone problems and breast cancer. It's, it's really a bad a bad deal. It's completely different than the adipose or the fat that's under your skin, like in your neck or in your arms or un under your arms or, or in your hips and thighs. This central fat, this visceral fat, visceral means around your organs, can be a real problem. The only way to see it is not through a blood test, but it's through imaging, through ultrasound or through an MRI. There is another test called GGT, gamma glutamyl transferase. And GGT is used in, in our world to look at the, the trouble with the common bile duct. Now the common bile duct can be inf inflamed from alcohol or it can be inflamed from infection or from inflammation. It can be inflamed from stones. It's just a sign that the bile system is not in very good shape. It's very useful to test for this and it's not a part of every lab test so it has to be ordered specially. The doctor has to check a different box. It's not part of a, of a built-in panel. It needs to be checked as an extra box. Another test that needs to be checked as an extra box is two tests for the pancreas. If a person has pancreatitis, or a doctor suspects that a person has acute pancreatitis, they're going to check the box for pancreatic lipase and pancreatic amylase in a blood test. And in that case, they're looking at the pancreas and trying to figure out if the person has elevated pancreas enzymes that might indicate anything from acute pancreatitis, which is pretty dangerous. It can, it can maim and kill up to 10% of people with it. It also may lead to a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. So it's important to look at, at pancreatic enzymes in, in the blood when someone has strange symptoms or abdominal symptoms that they or their doctor don't understand. The next test for us to look at is insulin. We need to look at fasting insulin and fasting glucose and hemoglobin A1c. These three go together. Fasting insulin, fasting glucose, and hemoglobin A1c. These are measures of how efficiently your body is burning sugars. And if you don't burn your sugars very efficiently, you can have insulin resistance, which causes a million diseases in, in Americans. And it really is the bane of our existence as Westerners. Our diet is high in refined carbohydrates and in processed seed oils. And those are the major contributing factors to this, uh, this epidemic of, of overweight and epidemic of brain problems, epidemic of cancer, epidemic of diabetes and heart disease. This is really a big deal for us. And you need to be fasting to get an accurate fasting glucose and fasting insulin. And some other, other lab tests too need, need fasting. Some of the cholesterol tests and some of the, the creatine tests need to be fasting. Another thing that comes up in general blood test is the liver enzymes, AST and ALT. Those are uh, often elevated just a little bit in people that are mildly toxic and they need to do a simple liver cleanse. When they're more than twice normal, it can be a real problem and they may need further evaluation from their doctor, their internist, their hematologist, or, or their specialist, or really any doctor that's licensed to, to look at that. There is also electrolytes. Electrolytes are things like chloride and sodium and, and calcium in the blood. Now, these really are only off when there's a terrible, you know, heart or usually kidney failure, but sometimes heart failure, where there is a real problem with the metabolism that's life-threatening. However, Beware that if your electrolytes are normal in your blood, that doesn't mean that they're normal in your tissues. So if your magnesium and your calcium is normal and your potassium and your chloride is normal in your blood work, that doesn't mean that you don't need supplementation and it doesn't mean that your cells throughout your body have enough. So you really can't rely on serum or blood tests of, of electrolytes to tell you that you're okay. You often get what's called a, a false negative where everything's okay and you think you're fine, but you really aren't. When you look at a urine analysis, a urine analysis is not going to show you everything that we can measure in urine. It's going to show you the basics about whether you have sugar spilling through into your urine or protein or damage to your kidneys or essentially an infection. 
So you might have a urinary tract infection or a UTI, which could be anywhere from your kidneys, down through your ureters, down to the bladder, or down through the urethra, male or female. And this problem, you don't know where it is, but you can get an idea of where it is based on the urine test. The really interesting thing about humans, both children and adults, is that they don't often have clear signs of both anemia and urinary tract infection clinically. So when you look at them and talk to them, they don't know they have it until you pull the test of blood or urine. So always when you're looking at anemias and urinary tract infections, just realize that you probably aren't going to spot them and you're probably not going to screen for them with questions and answers and self-surveys of their symptoms because they're often very silent and yet they're, they're persistent and pervasive in the body. So I, I can't tell you how many times I've pulled a urine test and told somebody, you have a urinary tract infection and you didn't know it. And that's, that's significant. Or a child that comes in with a behavior problem and they're doing all kinds of things to treat them and medicating them and they've got anemia. Again, uh, the anemia will be tested in blood. The urinary tract would be tested in, in both blood and urine. That urine test will tell you about essentially diabetes and sugar and infection and, and kidney damage. It doesn't tell you a lot about kidney stones. It doesn't tell you more about your metabolism. It basically tells you just about if your kidneys are, are failing with regard to sugar or with regard to infection. That is our series on general blood tests you can do for your health of your body and your brain as the CBC and the biochem profile and the urine analysis.